morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Zuniga. I work with uh, InterDigital. Thanks a lot for the presentation, Ian, and thank you, Cayetano and Telefonica, for inviting us to give this talk. Uh, my talk is called Advanced Architectures for Next Generation Networks, and it's going to touch a little on what we've been hearing uh, both yesterday uh, about the radio side and today about the, the network. Um, so I'm going to start by giving a, a brief introduction of, of uh, the company. Then I'm going to talk uh, a little more about the radio technologies, and later on I'm going to move more to the network and uh, other stuff we are doing at InterDigital these days. So uh, starting with the history of InterDigital, because uh, uh, it's not a very well-known company in the industry, if you will, still we've been there for a very long while. Uh, we started in the 80s, pretty much, uh, and since then <coughs> we've been always working uh, ahead of the curve. So you can see that uh, in the 80s uh, we started doing the first digital wireless calls. Uh, then we moved to, in the 90s, uh, do more uh, power control handoff uh, and type of technologies to enhance the, the efficiency and move to the digital era. Uh, we started doing uh, 3G when people were developing voice in, in 2G. And uh, basically, most of the time in our labs, uh, the technology is always ahead uh, of what's happening in the commercial. So today, uh, uh, after being a lead contributor to the HSPA and LTE architectures, we're focusing on system architecture of advanced network uh, technologies, bandwidth management, interference mitigation, spectral efficiency, and content delivery. So, uh, as I said, uh, we've been hearing a lot of, about these uh, visions and, and the view and predictions. Uh, to me, it's uh, actually encouraging to see that uh, we all have uh, the same view and, and we are approaching and, and tackling the technologies in, in a very similar way. Uh, what we see here is that the mobile technology has transformed society in the latest uh, years. And uh, that happens, of course, we're talking about smartphones mainly, uh, tablets and so on, but uh, we can extrapolate uh, easily to commerce, enterprise, healthcare, finance, energy, uh, all the utility, machine to machine, etc. Uh, and it's just becoming the norm. Uh, now, this is basically changing completely the paradigm that we have uh, now uh, because, of course, we are relying on an internet that was designed for fixed technologies. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, everything is mobile, everything is broadband, and there's different type of services. Uh, what happens here is that, uh, well, we're living in, a, in an era where uh, basically kids that uh, are born in this time are completely used to these new technologies, right? So in the past 10 years, we, are used, we were used to uh, internet as, uh, as an access where I get to a place and I get internet access. Of course, we were also used to hearing the news at 6 o'clock. Uh, we moved to an era where, uh, for instance, uh, a few days ago, my kid, a uh, five-year-old, told me, uh, Dad, can you show me this uh, small cartoon uh, that he likes in, in YouTube? And then he asked the question, are you, are you going to show it on the TV? Are you going to show it on the computer? Or are you going to show it on the mobile phone? And, you know, for him, it's just a given. Uh, and these kids basically are the ones that are going to be our users in five to ten years from now. So it's a completely different mindset. And I think we have to be very aware that that's exactly what is coming. So, of course, we were talking about uh, graphs and, and growth, and uh, Cayetano mentioned the Cisco graphs. Well, I have it here, uh, Cisco, Ericsson, both very well-known uh, networking companies, and everybody agrees with this uh, hot, hot, uh, hockey stick uh, curve. Uh, it's not only the traffic on, on smartphones, it's machine-to-machine -machine tablets, uh, so we have explosion of traffic volume, we have explosion of transactions happening, we, we will have explosion of number of devices, of course, with the Internet of Things and machine to machine. And basically what happens here is we created a monster. So we prayed for, for it and we had it. For the past 10 years we were talking about the killer app. And we just wanted to build networks for the killer app even though we didn't know what was a killer app. What happens these days is, okay, we made it. We don't have a killer app, we have a set of killer app stores, right? So, we have an issue. So, as I said, I'm going to talk about the radio side, and then I'm going to talk also about the, the network side of this uh, growth of traffic. So, 
Cayetano asked me to, to take a look and give it a, a, a shot at, at our radio view of the landscape. So I'm trying to do this uh, on, on this uh, slide. Uh, I'm basically using the UK and London example and trying to do some uh, back of the envelope uh, numbers to see the traffic growth uh, that we just uh, agreed and trying to extrapolate it to the radio side. So this is similar to what Misha presented yesterday, just some uh, back of the envelope ca calculations. So we can see that, uh, well, in, if we say in 2011, we have average speeds of two megabits, uh, 2015, probably 10, 2020, 30 megabits per second. And basically by then, uh, the five-year-olds are going to be 15-year-olds. So these guys are going to really, really use these connections as, as a given, right? The population, for instance, if we take London as an example, uh, the, even though the density will not increase too much, the average number of devices per person will increase. So we will not only have a smartphone, we will probably have also a tablet. And we will have something else, who knows. So then, if we transpose that to the number of devices per square kilometer, and uh, we put some VCR system utilization numbers, and we arrive to an average area capacity that goes from 1.5 to 16 to 65, uh, 66.5, sorry, uh, gigabits per second per square kilometer, right? So if we just take state of the art LTA today with the macro type of uh, deployment, we're talking about five gigahertz of spectrum. And of course, this is back of the envelope. Again, very conservative, but still, for comparison, what is five gigahertz of spectrum? Five gigahertz of spectrum, it's uh, compared to 550 that are available today, 1720 needed that by 2020 by ITU, we, uh, US looking for additional 500 megahertz. We do have an issue. So def definitely here, just by doing this uh, conservative calculations, we can stop and say, we've got a problem. Of course, if we try to be more optimistic, we're engineers, we like problems, and especially we like solving problems. Uh, we, think, we take a look at the cell size over time, and we've been talking about this uh, as well yesterday, right? So the drivers of capacity growth over the, the last 50 or more years is basically the cell size accounts for the, the biggest one. So of course we have the spectral efficiency, the spectrum, but the numbers of cells definitely is, is the biggest contributor to this uh, capacity enhancement. And then there we see that from the transatlantic communications to the personal devices, and according to this uh, Cooper's law that was mentioned too, well, basically the number of cells is just increasing. So we can, I think, very fairly uh, forecast that new topologies with smaller cells and more special reuse will define these new next generation networks, right? So we will have then the more spectrum, higher spectral efficiency. So basically by having this combination, we can say that we will sort out the meshing that will start solving the, the bandwidth crunch that we will face in the next uh, five to 10 years. So what is our view of this uh, small cell topology evolution and what are the technologies that we are developing to, to solve this? Well, there's two, two sides to it. On the one hand, we have the, the indoor cloud type of RAN, uh, working with visible light communication, indoor femtos, uh, Wi-Fi, Etc. And on the other hand, we have uh, the outdoor type of deployment, right? And there we are looking at the millimeter wave, 60 gigahertz, and so on type of frequencies, but also at the network uh, challenges and the architecture. So we can, we can have vehicle to device, device to device, uh, relays, and so on type of communications. So basically, this combination gives us an evolved architecture uh, comprised of ultra dense small cells. Uh, with higher frequencies this, that uh, use the visible light, cloud run, car carrier Wi-Fi, device to device, etc. And all these technologies basically will be the, the small cell topology evolution that we will be seeing in the future. So now I'm going to talk about two specific projects that we are working uh, on the radio side uh, where we are tackling this. Uh, first we have, the, for instance, the cellular control uh, device to device which basically allows you to have uh, what could be uh, called a, a virtual cell since uh, the mobile device becomes like a small cell. Uh, still, uh, in this case, for instance, it's relying on the uh, cellular infrastructure and for that, not necessarily for the radio link, but uh, it's probably using the, the assets also, or it's leveraging 
on assets uh, from the operator like uh, the trust or the, the security and the billing, you know, you can, you can still rely on those uh, without necessarily using too much of the spectrum. We're also looking at the millimeter wave uh, type of propagation and the issues that we face uh, when we are in the outdoor. Uh, in this case, we, we believe outdoor is, is the main challenge that we have to tackle. And for that, we are working on uh, technologies that use uh, very directive uh, uh, range uh, type of uh, links, right? So uh, going a little further on this uh, millimeter wave coverage challenge that uh, I just mentioned, uh, I'm plotting here just trying to compare apples to apple what, what are the issues with these uh, uh, frequencies uh, from 2 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz. Uh, the propagation characteristics are uh, completely different. Uh, in this case, we are using uh, a tool that uses not only propagation but also ray tracing. Uh, and basically, we see that the penetration is uh, two, three to four times roughly, I would say. So there's an issue about how to how and where we can get this meaningful coverage uh, in, in these uh, 60 gigahertz plus uh, bands, right? So for there, well, of course, we can talk about increasing uh, cell density using higher uh, ERIP directional antennas, uh, or uh, locate, locate this uh, base station in courtyards, campuses, uh, inside airports, etc. right? So still, uh, these are solutions, but much work remains these days. Uh, so we are working on propagation, algorithms, uh, interference calculation techniques, uh, device, device feasibility for these bands, and even the business cases, etc. So basically at this point we can say there is bandwidth. The challenge is first to find it, and for that we have to look at the millimeter wave, the, li the lightly licensed access, like the TV white spaces that we've also talked about, the visible lights, the home net uh, Wi-Fi, uh, trusted Wi-Fi and all these technologies, femton networks, device to device. But also we have to use it, and for that we have to do it smartly. So how exactly are we going to use someone else's network? When are we going to offload traffic from one network to the other? How can we maintain this quality of experience that we've been uh, talking uh, yesterday in the afternoon? Where are we going to get the content? So basically there's no one single solution about uh, solving the bandwidth crunch. And for that, we are working also on no, some non-radio type of uh, solutions. So in this case, for instance, we have uh, something that is closer to the 3GPP type of architectures and evolution. Uh, this one we call bandwidth management solution suite. And for that, we start evolving from uh, pretty much release 8, uh, release uh, 10 type of technologies. So what we do is we are doing a, a evolved uh, programmable policy rules and application detection that are operation driven, operator driven, sorry, policy based network selection, traffic offload, uh, ANDSF, uh, PCR, PCF, uh, for those that are familiar. Uh, and this is evolving, as I, as I said, uh, R8 type of technologies. Uh, if we move to release 10, then we have uh, a little more advanced uh, tools like uh, IP flow segregation, where we can assign IP flows to specific networks always, already from the beginning. Then we can have IP flow mobility, which is, uh, I would say, one level uh, below the, the normal handover. So when we are talking about uh, session continuity, we can have uh, uh, seamless, non-seamless type of handovers uh, where we move all, this, all the traffic from one IP technology to the other. Well, IP flow mobility is about moving traffic, one specific traffic, uh, without necessarily moving a whole IP address even from one network to the other. Uh, bandwidth aggregation. And uh, Dina mentioned something about that yesterday. So we are also working on, on this type of technologies where we distribute an IP flow over multiple networks. So on the policy and uh, QoS enforcement side, well, we, we have to take all factors into account. So first and foremost, of course, the, there's the operator profitability. So the policies are, are uh, written, let's say, by the operator. Uh, then we have to take into account the user preferences and controls. Uh, that are important and keep in mind the, the service level agreements between the two. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, applications are treated uh, uh, in a fair way because not all applications are equal and we talked about this uh, monitoring applications and how to basically do DPI and so on. Uh, the network conditions of course because the network changes uh, in time. Then we have the context, which is both for the user and the, and the network. So where is it located, and the content, where is the, the user located, uh, what's the time of day, what's the battery life, etc. 
and of course the traffic identification. So as I said, the content, where, where is this content going uh, to, from, uh, is, what type of uh, traffic is creating, what's the protocol that is transporting it, uh, what application is it going to serve, etc. Uh, now, moving away from the policy and getting a little more on what we call the increasing pipes uh, and specifically tackling the, the cloud side. Uh, we have bandwidth management uh, uh, features, basically, and, and again, we, we can see these prototypes. By the way, uh, for those that are uh, attending uh, Barcelona, you will be able to see, if you, if you pass by our booth, uh, some of these technologies live. So in this case, this is uh, doing data aggregation across uh, cellular and Wi-Fi uh, all the way up from the cloud, so you can talk about an anchor uh, point uh, aggregation. Uh, where you can basically uh, integrate the two networks uh, in, in a seamless way. Uh, this basically allows operators to do offloading, uh, least, co least cost routing, uh, IP flow mobility load balancing, but the users also benefit because they have enhanced aggregated channels, increased bandwidth, and of course red redundancy. Uh, moving the similar type of technology, but now towards the edge, uh, there's also something that we call the converge femto Wi-Fi access which basically gives you the, the opportunity to combine traffic, but at the edge, not necessarily at the, at the angle point. And uh, there we can aggregate across licensed, unlicensed, uh, like TV white spaces type of technology, as well as cellular. So in this case, well, it will enable the traditional operators to offer premium services over this uh, increased uh, bandwidth and still keeping control of, of, the, of the network side. Um, now, talking about the Internet of Things or the machine-to-machine, -machine, in this case, uh, we can very much uh, see that uh, this huge amount of machines will generate a huge amount of transactions that can very easily flood uh, the network, and, and we also talked about that yesterday. There's, uh, the, of course, the, the iPhone example where, you know, the signaling uh, killed AT&T's network and so on. Uh, well, in this case, we can very much see that uh, we're talking about a factor higher of number of devices that will connect to the network, right? So when, whenever this network uh, devices connect to the network, uh, we, we are working on this end-to-end uh, -end gateway that basically proxies and, and filters the type of traffic and enables the, the, the cloud to just do service management and, and still keep the, the traffic uh, towards the edge. This is something that, uh, for instance, is compatible with uh, what Etsy is doing, and, and, and we, we, we will also be able to, to show you this if you pass by Barcelona to see uh, uh, another prototype working. So for the operators, this offers the benefit, basically, of local security management, uh, group authentication, authorization, and registration, and, and you filter all that uh, towards the edge. You can do efficient bulk uh, transfer uh, to devices with multicast broadcast, again, at the edge. Uh, local caching, etc. And uh, for new operators, well, we believe this will enable these new operators, MBNOs, OTTs, to offer disruptive services over this new infrastructure and, and be a little more creative about what they can do with it without necessarily disrupting the, the core. Um, if we take a look at the future a little beyond uh, the next releases and what is uh, available today, then we are also working on dynamic spectrum management. And this is more towards the cognitive radio. Uh, yesterday we discussed whether you call this cognitive or not. Well, in this case, for us, it's cognitive because it configures uh, depending on the type of technology that is available. So basically, you have services, uh, again, from the cloud. Uh, and this type of cognitive radio technology will let you connect either to, let's say, cellular, lightly licensed technologies like white spaces, wireless LAN, or uh, unlicensed type of technologies and basically make a nice combination uh, that will erase the boundaries between a spectrum. So once you erase the boundaries between a spectrum, basically the operator is happy because they can address better the QoS and network management needs. The user will basically manage the services, will not care much about connectivity, and that's also something we mentioned. I, I should not care about Wi-Fi, am I connected, am I not, I should turn it on, off. You should, you should just use it, basically. That's the main, main point for the user. And of course, for the applications, we believe it also offers an abstraction layer because applica application developers should not worry about uh, what type of network they are working on or what type of application they should develop for Wi-Fi or for 3G. Basically, they should use their resources without the need of becoming a wireless network expert. So important to work on the APIs there, too. So, 
bringing it all together, our vision uh, to the bandwidth crunch is basically to provide a holistic approach. And this holistic approach uh, has for us three elements. The spectrum optimization that will offer you bigger pipes, uh, connectivity and mobility that will offer more pipes, and intelligent data delivery uh, with, that will give you better pipes. So defining these three, basically, Spectrum optimization, we accelerate the evolution of cellular standards uh, by increasing the cell edge performance, uh, doing direct terminal to terminal communications, working on small cells, uh, joint transceivers, etc. For the connectivity and mobility, we are basically building the network of networks uh, that will allow you offloading, doing least cost routing, uh, load balancing, bandwidth aggregation, uh, dynamic spectrum management, uh, etc. For the intelligent data and delivery, well, what we are doing is creating more efficient media, media distribution systems that are con context aware, that let you do uh, local content caching, uh, again, depending on where the content is located, peer-to-peer -peer communications, uh, store and forward type of techniques, uh, reduce signaling overhead protocols in general, and simplified APIs. And with this, I thank you for your time, and I will welcome uh, questions. And what has.